Welcome to 2024. So to start the year off, I thought we would make a one camera, one lens, one scene video because it is a great way to get that creativity flowing right off the start of the year and to sort of push me out of my comfort zone. So the lens that we're going to be using today is the one that you're looking through, which is the Sony 11 millimeter f1.8. Now I've made a lot of videos about how I use it with the a7 IV and how it helps in the 4K 60 mode with the crop. I've also used it for some street photography and I just really love this lens and a lot of people have loved it as well. A lot of people have reached out to me telling me they have bought it and used it and loved it and I just want to see what it looks like in shooting a quick little cinematic scene. I've always wanted to shoot a scene that involved a 50s, 60s era style classic American diner and we just so happened to have one. The scene that we ended up deciding on is the diner scene from the classic cult film, Pulp Fiction. Now I know from my research that that movie was shot on a 40 millimeter anamorphic lens. And depending on the squeeze of the lens, whether it's two times or 1.6 or 1.5, the focal length will be around 20 millimeters or 25. And with the Sony 11 millimeter 1.8 on my Sony a7 IV, in crop mode, it'll give me about 16 millimeters. And I think that'll actually work a little bit better because we're shooting this gorilla style in the diner. And when I'm sitting across the table from Katerina, it'll give me enough space without being awkward having to get out of the booth and stuff because, well, we're kind of doing it without permission. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so a few things to keep in mind here. We're gonna have to shoot it a little later in the evening because that's when the, the original scene takes place and it'll show off the neon lights a little bit better. But if you have been following the series, one camera, one lens, one scene, then you know that we shoot it in how many shots, Kat? Five. We only use five shots. So I've crafted it in a way where it'll mainly feature the speaking parts of Mia, who's played by Uma Thurman, and Katerina will be doing that part the best that she possibly can. And hopefully we will end up with something really fun or cool. And in the end, after we review the scene, after you watch it, after this, we'll review it and see what we did good, what we could have done better, what we liked, what we didn't. And yeah, so we'll see you back after the scene. So what do you think? I think it's like a watch museum. With a pulse. Hi, I'm Buddy. What can I get you? I'll have the burger. Bloody. And the $5 shake. Did you just order a $5 shake? Mm -hmm. That's a shake. That's milk and ice cream. That's what I heard. That's $5. You don't put bourbon in it or nothing? All right, just checking. All right, and that is what we came up with. Now, if I'm being honest, there are things that I liked and a lot of things that I would do differently if we had the opportunity to shoot again or if we had more time in that diner. Let's talk about the things that I did like. This opening shot, since it didn't exist in the original film, if you've seen it, they drive up in a car and then they walk into the diner. We didn't have that opportunity, so I wanted to create a shot that established where we were gonna be throughout the scene. I like that there was the sign right away that grabbed your attention, and then Kat walks in to introduce the main character. Now, the most challenging thing about this particular scene was that it was really cold out, and Kat was wearing a very thin jacket. So we only had four or five takes, and her hitting the mark was also a little bit challenging because I had the camera on manual focus because I didn't want it to jump from the sign to her face. I just wanted it to be a very natural entrance of the main character. I also really liked the colors with the sign and the composition. 
Now, speaking of composition, that was the second thing that I did like about the overall scene. For the most part, I just used the rule of thirds to frame up the main character in each different scene. It was the easiest way to get a good look fast because even though we knew that it was going to be in a diner, we weren't sure exactly where we would be placed, how many people would be around us. And those are the uncontrollable things when you're kind of shooting run and gun guerrilla style. Now, the third thing that I did like was the color grade. For the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. I tried to get it as close as possible to the original. I did use a reference frame, but the challenging thing was the diner that we were in had so much red. Like there was red neon, red pleather, red leather. So the whole scene was just very, very red. So to try and get a balanced look took a bit of work because the original scene, they have a lot more blues and teals and a good balance between the blues and the oranges. But in the end, I did like what we landed on. Now to the things that I would do differently. So the first one, the sound. Obviously, we were in a real active diner on a Saturday night. There were a lot of rambunctious customers around us for some reason, and they were playing music really loud. So even though we had our mics, it did take a bit of work to manipulate the voices so that they would come through clear enough. Obviously, in the real scene, they probably just had the dialogue and then they laid in the music and the sound effects after so they could get clean speech. And we didn't have that luxury. Now, the second thing that definitely could have been better was the delivery of our lines. Now, Katerina and I are not professional actors and we're trying to emulate two of the best that has ever done it. So if we had more time and more takes available, I probably would have ran it again and again until it was smoother and more seductive or elegant in the way that the original lines were spoken. But again, we're not professional actors. Maybe I'm just too hard on myself, but that is something that I would want to change. The last thing, to get more dynamic shots, meaning I did not have enough shot sizes. Because of the five shot parameter that I've placed on this little case study series of one camera, one lens, one scene, I wanted to craft it in a way where we could shoot it only in five shots, which meant that it was mainly focused on Katerina. In the original, the speaking back and forth, we kind of copied somewhat correctly, even though I was sitting on the wrong side of the frame. It was a shot reverse shot. So that was pretty straightforward, a medium wide shot. The shot where she grabs the menu, that's the one that bothered me the most because in my head, changing to the 45 degree angle, I thought would give enough of a break from the head on shot, but it was the same shot size essentially. And in the original, they break up the speaking scenes with a three shot where it's a wider shot where you can see three characters, the two main characters facing each other and the waiter. Now, what I should have done was there was an empty booth across from us. I should have put the camera on that table facing us so that the two characters were facing each other, giving us a two shot. And that would have broken it up better than the shot that I went with. Because there's only five shots, it never would have been able to play out like the original, but it would have given that scene in five shots more visual interest. At the end of the day, we did have a lot of fun shooting this. It's a learning experience and it'll help going into shooting these types of scenes or client projects, giving us better insight. To be completely honest, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to post this because I wasn't super happy with it in the beginning. And as I worked through it, I became more comfortable and content with it because I knew that it wasn't perfect, but that I was going to grow and learn from it for next time. And as I said in my video towards the end of the year, it's better to be proud. And at the end of the day, I am proud of this scene and that I am putting it out and it's not perfect, but it'll help me move forward. So. Hopefully you found some things useful. Hopefully you like some stuff. Hopefully you have some feedback to give to help me grow or others grow. And in the end, if you enjoyed watching this video, please share, possibly subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. And welcome to everyone who is seeing this video for the first time in 2024. I hope you had a great start to the year and I can't wait to make more videos heading into the new year because we have a lot of stuff planned. And as always, 
live passionately, and stay inspired. Bye.